Hello everyone, I'm here today with a new process video and this one is going to be a challenge because guess what we're doing again today? We're going to DIY a page protector because I don't have one that meets my needs. So here we are again and sometimes it helps me to visualize what it might look like or what my options are so I've drawn them out over here but first I want to show you all the photos I need to accommodate here and why this is kind of difficult. So I have a 10 by 8 and I would like to keep it all or most of it if possible. Then for the other side I have a 5 by 7 and I have two 3 by 4s. So kind of some weird sizes here and of course you know when I'm printing these I get these grand ideas in my head and I'm like oh I'll figure out later how to put it together. Maybe not the smartest tactic, <laughs> because then I get myself into this predicament. And I'd really love not to have to reprint these enlarged ones, because, you know, I mean, they're not super expensive, but they're also not super cheap. And these, I can't slash won't do at home. So, it does require reordering if if I decide, oops, now I just want a regular old 4 by 6 So, here are my plans that I have drawn up. I have given myself three options. Two of them are to make a 10 by 12 page protector, which I don't have, but I have a few so I can make it. And then the other one is to use the 9 by 12 that I have. So that's not a problem because I have those handy. I'd still have to, you know, fuse part of it to get what I want, but it would be fine. Slightly less work than the 10 by 12 because then I have to start with the 12 by 12, cut down, fuse the sides, fuse the pockets, all that stuff. In looking at these, I kind of have already made the decision I don't like this option because of this weird 4x5 configuration that it would give me up top. Just not crazy about that. It's not a standard size. I'd have to use a background of some kind to make that work with the photos I have and not really crazy about it. So that leaves me with this 10x12 option or the 9x12. I'm kind of liking maybe this idea because it gives me three pockets up top, which you don't normally see in these configurations. I'd get a four by four and two three by fours. These would fit perfectly. I wouldn't have to do anything with them on that side. I would just have to come up with something for a four by four, but that doesn't feel too difficult. Down here, I can just use my photo all the way across, like no altering really. So that, that is certainly a nice option. For this one, Still fairly easy, and it would give me a 4x6 up top and a 3x4. That's definitely more standard to how some 9x12 page protectors come, like ready-made. I just don't have them. And then my 5x7 would go on the bottom. I would have to mat that because it doesn't fill the entire space. It also would mean that I would have to cut the big photo to 8x9 instead of 8x10. However, there is some dead space here. So I could cut off even three quarters inch here, quarter here, and like it would be fine. I could figure that out. So I just need to decide between this one and this one. I have decided, I guess, that I'm going to really challenge myself. I want to go with the 10 by 12 because of this interesting configuration here. And then I don't have to chop off any of my photo, which I, I kind of like because... There is a lot of dead space up here. I could really use that to embellish for that par portion. So I kind of like that idea. So I am going to stick with this, but it does require a lot more measuring and futzing to make the page protector. So the first thing I have to do then is to measure this out to make sure that I have this all done correctly. And I'm a little nervous about that. Luckily, I have a bunch of these 12 by 12s left from other projects from when I scrapped 12 by 12. So if I screw it up, I have more to work with. So I'm not that concerned. All right, so I've already trimmed my page protector to be about 10 and a half inches. I want to make sure that I leave some space because I have to seal the edge and then I have sealing that's going to happen in between. So I'm doing that part first. Now I'm going to seal that edge along here. And because it is along an edge, I don't have to be super precise. So I'm not measuring out. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. The rest I will actually measure. All right, step one is completed. I fused 
the far edge there. So now I have that done. Now I have to measure out the rest of it. And I think I'll do this side first, simply because it's just easier <laughs> because the bottom part will not need any other fusing. It's just kind of the top part. So just to show you this again, this is what I'm going for. So I need my fold to be here at three inches and then the rest, obviously I'll have to seal those, but that will come later because once I drop stuff in, it's sealed closed like forever. So I have to be very careful with that. All right, now I've just sealed here at three inches. So I have that done. Now the moment of truth is gonna happen. I have to cut this thing. <laughs> and that, it makes me a little nervous to do it. Um, but you know what? It's all, it's all part of the process. Well guys, guess what? I made a fatal error. I completely forgot that in this particular album, while the front cover has like two extra inches of space, the back cover does not. So I can't have a spot that is seven inches like this one here because I need 10 across. So it would have been three and seven. I can't have that there because it will hang out too far past the edge of the back album. <sighs> I knew that from a previous thing that I did and I just completely forgot. So sadly, this is not going to work. In another album, it might that it has equal distance front and back, but this one, that's not how it's made. So it's not going to work. So now I have to go back to my nine by 12, which I guess is easier. But honestly, I'm really disappointed that my other configuration isn't going to work. All right, so I did what I needed to do to that page protector and I just slid them in to make sure they fit. They do, so the sizing is correct and everything. Then I can fold this in. So I can take this out for now. But very important, giving the other snafus, like just to make sure it's actually going to fit the way I want it to fit. So I have that. So now I just have to figure out like obviously this will go on the other side but now that changed how that will look which I'm not super happy about I could cut it down to make it fit in here but I really wanted an enlarged photo so I could have it span both and just be part of the part that flips in I'm just I'm kind of undecided because frankly I'm still not over not being able to do it the other way I wanted all right, I can already tell this is going to end up being two videos because this got so off the rails and isn't going the way I planned. But before I move to the next one, I just want to show you kind of what I've ended up with here since I had to sort of change horses midstream. This will be this layout when it's flat. When it flips over, you'll see this backside. So I'll have a three by four and a three by eight. I think I'm going to take this photo up top and then I will use a three by eight pocket card here. And then I will have all of this open. Let's remove this so you don't see that. So that will be open up top. This I am going to have to cut, but I think I am going to keep it in the bigger pocket. I'll just trim the sides to get it to fit in there. I'm really only losing an inch. It's not that horrible. So I'll do that. There'll be a background. And then I'll have to put something up here in the four by six. I do have four by six cards, so... I can, I can figure that out and maybe that's where I'll journal. That gives me a lot of journaling space. We'll see though, but I just wanted you to kind of understand the configuration of where this is going and then I'll do a separate video of how I actually ended up putting it all together. Thanks for watching.